Hey everyone, it's Katie. So, I have Primo White Pearl out here, and I want to make a mica shift. Now, when I want really strong mica shifts, I tend to add more pearl. So, this is, and now on camera this may not pick up, but in real life I can see the difference. Um, this is Primo's regular White Pearl, okay? So, I, I took a batch and I split it up into four. And on this one, I added Pearl White. This is the Pearl X, and I got all of these in one set. So I have the Pearl White, and all I did was open it up. I dipped it in, worked it in, mushed it up, dipped it in, mushed it up, dipped it in, mushed it up. I did it while I was watching a movie. Um, I did have gloves on, so I didn't get mica powder all over my hands. Um, so this one, you know, I added a bunch of Pearl White to, and I just... I didn't pour a whole bunch on, I just dipped it into the container and then smooshed it in. And when it was all mixed in, I dipped it in again and whatever stuck, stuck. So this is um, the regular and then the pearl white on here. So again, you may not see much of a difference. This one, I did the micro pearl. Okay, so this is a micro pearl. Again, just dipped it in and moved it around. Again, you might not see much of a difference, but I'm hoping it will make a difference when I do a mica shift. And it has in the past when I've used colors and added them to the accent clays by Primo. This one's the macro pearl that I added in. So the regular and then the macro pearl. Okay. And then on this one, I have some Born Pretty powders, which I really think are just for nails that I got on Amazon, um, I believe. This is a blue one, they came in a set. So I added a little bit of that to one of these batches. And again, I don't know if you'll be able to see the blue undertone, but it's in there. Okay, so you can decide not to do that. I just wanna make a really strong mica shift. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix all of these together. I just wanted to uh, dip them in separately and then now I'll mix them all together and then I'll have a really, hopefully, a really strong mica shift on this. I mean, you don't need to do that. That was just something I did. So pretty much what I'll do is I'll just stick it in my pasta machine and um, well, I'll flatten it out a little bit because it's way thick. And then I'll just mix it up until it's a homogenous mix through the pasta machine. And then we will create a mica shift. I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but I'm going to do something with it. So, we're going to have snow soon in Vermont. I just got my snow tires put on today. Okay, so I'm going to mix that up and I'll be back. So it's all mixed up, but I made it look like this for a reason so I can show you how to do a mica shift. Now when we're doing a mica shift, the goal is to get the clay in a state where all the mica particles are laying flat on each other because they're like flat discs, right? And we want them all to be laying flat on top of each other, okay? So in areas where you can't see any ripples, that's what's happening. In these areas, all the micro particles are like icebergs, all jaggedy. You know, we want this like a lake that's flat. And then in the summer, when the ice starts to melt and it gets all jaggedy, that's what we're going to do when we actually jam the stamp down in or a texture roller or whatever. We're going to break up. So the way you get everything to lay flat is pretty much just by rolling in your pasta machine in the same direction. I mean, you can go this direction or this direction, but you want to keep folding it. So I just folded it in half and I'm going to run it through. Okay. Now I am going to tuck in these edges right now just to get it, the edges all evened up. So let me, I'm going to run it through that way again. Okay, then we're going to fold it in half and run it through. Again, either this way or this way, it doesn't matter. And each time we do this, we're going to be forcing the particles to lay flat. I'm just going to push these edges a little bit. Because I folded it, you can still see a roll, some stuff right there. Okay, and we're going to keep folding. So see this side has those when I folded the edges in, but look at this side. This side's getting much smoother. So again, keep folding it. 
and every time the rollers get in there it's going to push it down flat. I'm just trying to get these edges good too. See how we're getting less of the rippling. This side's looking really good. And you're probably going to always have a little bit where your fold was. That's okay. See how we're getting there now? I mean, I know there's the roller marks, but it's starting to lay pretty flat. Maybe I'll do it once just to make my sheet a little smaller. I'll fold both ends in. Which means on this side I'm going to have another seam, but this side should be still fairly good. And right now I'm working on the thickest setting of my pasta machine. I'm just going to keep doing it until I'm happy. It's pretty much until you get a sheet that where you're happy. Now this is on my thickest setting right now, and I think I'm going to take it down. So I'm using an Atlas 150 Wellness. Zero is my thickest setting, and nine is my thinnest. Now a zero and one are like identical, like identical. Watch, let's see. Okay, so this is on a zero right now. Let's measure it from one end to the other end. It's about six inches, right? Let me put it through on a one and let's see how much that stretches it lengthwise. Like, they're almost identical settings. Honestly, I don't even know why they have a one. Okay, let's see how much that stretch it. <laughs> I mean, come on. Oh, wait, let's put it right on my mark where I had it before. I can see my exact mark. What, it gave me a quarter of an inch? So, a zero and one are almost identical. I think I'm going to put this at a two. Thickness-wise to work with. So now I'm at a setting two, roughly a setting two. And I might just roll it with my, let me clean my roller, my regular roller, just to get any pasta machine marks out of it. And then you can use, when you're doing mica shifts, you can use whatever you want to texture it. You could just use a ball tool and make all these kind of balls. You could use different types of stamps, different types of like rollers, like the core rollers and stuff, which I've used before when I did my pendant that I used my rose in, um, and the ferns, but I've also done dragonflies. I have different core rollers. So that's my sheet there. But I just recently on Amazon got some new texture sheets that I wanted to use with pearl white. Um, so this is, and I can post these on my Amazon account. Um, my ambassador page, which will be in the links. So this is Citrus Top from Cool Tools. And these aren't huge, but these are big enough for me. So this is Citrus Top. Cool swirly pattern. Then I have this one here, which is another cool swirly pattern. This one is called Blundering Winds. And then I also have this one, which I thought was kind of cool too. And this one's called Out of Sight Embossed. Out of Sight. Okay. Let me grab my other ones just to make sure there's not a, on ones I've already have, uh, make sure there's not one I want to use. So I have a box of all my texture stuff here. And I don't have a lot and I don't need a lot. You know, you got enough. I do like the core rollers. I do like those a lot and I've showed those in at least one, maybe two videos. Um, this one doesn't have a name on it, but I think it's a cool tools as well. Here's another one, again, no name. I've had these for a while. Here's another one. This one I did a Sutton Slice on last time. Blooming Hearts That's what this one's called. I did a Sutton Slice with this too. This one here, this is a very fine texture. This one's uh, Floral Curls. I have this really big one. This is uh, Fiddlehead Firm. So this is a mega tile. This thing is huge. Like it's about six inches wide. I'd probably say it's about a foot long, 12 inches long. These little ones, which are fine for me and a lot cheaper, these are about four by two, which is big enough for me to make a pendant. Um, oh, this is a cool one. This is a uh, simple leaves. 
just showing you some different ones while I have it. This is a Lisa Pavelka one, um, Illusionary, that has some 3D ones, which is pretty cool. Um, this is a Lisa Pavelka one that's blooming. Those are a little more expensive. This one is Crackle. It's a Lisa Pavelka. Oh, this is a cool one. This is a Lisa Pavelka Tumbling Blocks. You get two different textures on this one. That one might look cool. In one way, I see like a star. Right there, I see a star. But in another way, I see little squares. Depending how I'm looking at it. That's kind of neat. Um, let me show you some other ones while we're going through them. This is a Lisa Pavelka. This is Cludulets. 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 I don't know, that's weird. That's a weird freaking name. It's like a doodles. Um, I have this one. It's Lisa Pavelka. This is foliage. Just in case you see any designs you like. This is Elisa Pavelka. This is her Paisley. I've done a sentence slice with this one when I was first starting. Um, I have this set on Amazon that I was given. You see these on Amazon when you search texture sheets. They just have some different, kind of different textures. I was given these ones. So if you see this set on Amazon, just so you know, this is what you're going to get. I haven't used these yet. That one's not bad. This one wouldn't be bad if it wasn't all sectioned, for what I'm thinking. That's kind of cool. It's kind of tribalish. Waves and dots. It's a decent crackle. It's a nice deep etch in there. And then I also have some weird things like, um, you know, like this is a texture sheet I made on my own out of Sculpey 3, just with a ball tool. Um, I have a hairband. I have a piece of rope. Um, I have a little burlap bag here. Oh, I have a, from a notebook. It's got this texture in it, a very light texture for like backs and stuff. Um, so, you know, you can really find some things that have some neat, oh, a dog, a dog collar, some neat light textures, and I know that just took a while, we going through those, and I don't know why I just did it, but I figured, hey, you might find something you like, you know, and I don't really think I've ever done texture sheets in a video, so I didn't think I found one more than my new ones that I wanted to use, so I'm going to use my new ones, now I don't know though, now I could potentially use all three and cut this this way, because I could get one pendant out of each, you know, and see what one I like. So if I do one like this, one like this, and one like that, and we'll do all three. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. Some people spray this with um, armor all and put it, push it on. Some people do cornstarch. Some people do water. Um, so there's a couple of different ways you can, you know, do it. I like on the one that I did like with my leather effect, those plastic ones, I like using the armor all because it's easy to wipe on that. But armor all on this would be difficult to get it even. Um, cornstarch would work. I do tend to use the water. I don't know why because it's handy pretty much. So let's do some water. So literally, you can mist your stamp. Mist your clay a little bit. And then we're just going to lay it on here. Start from one end to the other, and that way you're pushing out any air bubbles and stuff. And really push. You want to force that clay to move. Now, I'm going to push with my fingers and not roll this, because rolling it, you're apt to get double images. Now, this clay is quite stiff. Let me stand up a little bit. Brr. I might actually roll it. Usually I do it with my hands, but... I might roll this because it's really hard. That clay is pretty stiff. Okay, so I'm going to roll it just one pass through really hard and really slow. I 
I don't want to bump the camera either. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so there's that one and nothing's stuck in it. There's my blade. be enough texture for what I want. We can try a second one here. And again, I may roll it because this clay is really stiff. So I really hope I don't bump the camera, guys, okay? But if I do, I'm sorry. Crooked, but that's okay. Now the thing about using the water is you're gonna have to dry it off. Same with using the cornstarch, you're gonna have to brush it off. So it's really whatever you have handy. So there's that one. Oh, I'm sorry. I think the mailman's here. Sorry guys. They startle me too when they do that. Okay, and then here's this one. And you can redo this as many times as you want. Is if you're not happy with it, just redo this. Just run your, dry it off one, and then run your clay back through the pasta machine, get all the mica particles to lay down flat again, and then just redo it. Ooh, I gotta use my blade side, Katie. I kinda like that one. Hmm. Okay, let me think about these and see what one I wanna use, plus I gotta dry it off. I might use one of these two here. That one or that one. I think this one's too open of a pattern for what I'm going to do. So, I will decide what one I want to use. Okay, I'll be back once I dry it all off. And I think that one I decide, I'll make a big sheet out of all of this. I might test it. I might do a slice or two just to see how it looks. And then I'll uh, come back with a big sheet of this or double it. Before I do anything, let me show you how I, I mean, the texture sheets, whatever, don't worry about them. They'll dry their rubber. But with these, I generally just pat these dry gently with a clean paper towel. Pick them up, clean your table off. Just kind of pat them dry and let them dry for a second. Um, the cornstarch works well too. I just don't have any handy on me. So you can use the cornstarch. Um, you do have to brush it off after your excess, if you got excess. So just, I mean, there's tons of different ways to get them not to stick. So that's your choice. That's individual preference on what you want to use. Okay, so that's how I would dry them off if I'm using water. Okay, before you do anything with it, just get it a little dry. Okay, I'll be back. Now to help me decide, I just slice these real quick. And this, you can do this. So this is all pretty much flat now, and that's what this pattern will look like. I mean, the edges aren't, but in the middle here, I just did a quick one. I think I'm gonna use that one. This is what this one will look like, which is pretty cool. And this one here, but I think this is too open. It's a cool design, but it's a little open for what I want. So I'm still in between on these two. This one looks kind of neat, and so does that one. So maybe I'll do two. So I'll mix all this clay back up, get it to ready, and roll it out, and then I'll show you the next part. So what I'll do is I'll mix that with that, and that with that, and maybe we'll do two, two different patterns and see what one we like better. So I re-rolled them out, and I'm gonna use these two. I don't have cornstarch, but I have baking powder, so I just wanted to show you how you would apply it I'm not gonna show you how I'm gonna roll it out, but just how you would apply it if you wanna go this route. So I found the easiest way to get this on, if I can find my brush, is a fan brush. Oh, there it is. It's just by using a fan brush. And just apply a little to your clay. And I have used this before. I guess I didn't realize it was baking powder and not cornstarch. 
because cornstarch in Vermont comes in the same container. I guess I didn't read out of my cabinet. But I don't have cornstarch. I have baking powder. So I have used this before and it was fine. Okay, so just brush it on there. And then I would brush a little bit to ensure no sticking into your... Texture sheet as well. Get it all down in those grooves. And then kind of dust it off. Okay, that's how I'll do it to both of these rather than water this time. And when that's done, I will be back. Okay, so now we have these two mica shifts and the, the texture is actually raised right now, okay? And we're going to begin shaving it off. So I like to use a flexible blade. That works best for me. Um, again, as sharp as it can possibly be would be great. Lightly stick it down. And you're going to want to bend your blade. I find bending my blade really well helps me. Um, and then you're literally just going to shave the top layer off. Now, I'm not perfect at this. I've seen people get it off in one false swoop. Not me. I can't do that. So, you know, sometimes I go on a diagonal and that's easier. However you want to do, just do it. You're just going to shave it all off. And it's going to look like it's raised and it's not going to be. Which is pretty neat. And that's, oop, here I got a little deeper. And again, if you mess this up, which is kind of why I prefer using water, because the cornstarch and stuff kind of dries the clay out a little bit. So, you know, as long as you just dry off the water, you can, if you mess this up, you can totally redo this easy enough. When I first started doing these, and I haven't done any in a while. When I first started doing these, I think my first one I did like three times because I kept gouging too deep. I didn't really know how deep. I mean, I had watched a couple people do it on YouTube and knew I was supposed to shave it off, but I didn't really know how deep to go. So all you would do is just ball it back up and do it again, and it's okay. So you can just redo these things over and over and over until you get a shift that you're really happy with. Or it's as clear as you want it to be. But like I said, the cornstarch kind of dries out the clay a little bit, so it's, it gets different. So if you're going to do it many times, even though you're going to have to wait for the water, dry off the water a little bit, I'd probably use water because it's less risk of... Uh, making your clay, clay too crumbly and adding too much of something in. Now, someone on my Facebook page the other day um, was having issues with crumbly clay. I do have a video on what I do with really crumbly clay, um, but people were posting different things like use different mineral oils, use different coconut oils, using different... One lady even posted you could use armor all. Okay, so this is just my thought on this, okay? One, I've never used those other things, so I would never tell you to use them. I use the clay softener, except for like in Pardo and stuff, because that's not the same composition. Um, every clay has different chemical makeup and has different elastomers and polymers and different things in it. So, you know, if there's a brand that you're using and it has a clay softener, you want to use that brand's clay softener. Pardo, pretty much, you just got to warm up because it has beeswax in it. Um, as far as adding like other chemicals, like... Um, armor all and stuff if you're gonna do that and I have not tested this and I would not recommend it but if you're gonna do that mix it in your clay leave it for a year bake a piece leave that baked piece for a year if your clay starts to get really weird and sticky and g weird even after baked it wasn't chemically sound okay I just saw a post on another clay page the other day someone said my baked pendants even after a year are they're, they were changing color and they were getting all sticky on her and stuff. Your clay can change even after being baked. The properties of your clay can change over time. 
So, I, I wouldn't go adding stuff to your clay unless you know it is clay compatible. Just get a freaking $8 bottle of clay softener. You know what I mean? It lasts forever. I don't even think it's 8 bucks. I think it's like 4 It's worth it to not risk messing up your your project because you'll think everything's fine. And you're like, oh yeah, that softened it. Everything's good. And then a year from now, someone will call you and be like, hey, my pendant, the varnish I put on that's peeling off. Or, um, you know, if you resin it, the other side would get all all weird and it can look weird and it start changing and you don't want someone calling you or you don't want yourself to notice that like who wants to notice that after all their hard work they did especially if that's multiple batches of clay you just wasted all of that so the polymer clay tutor Cindy Leach has tested a, a bunch of different products inks and markers and things like that to make sure they're clay compatible she lets them sit for at least six months I think on most of them um, I have some products that I've been testing. They've been sitting there since July before I'm even going to tell you guys about it. And it's October, the end of October now. We're in November next week. We're at the end of this week. Um, before I even do a tutorial on it, I'm going to test it myself to make sure. If Cindy Leach has tested it and she said it would work, I, I do trust her because she does pretty extensive testing. And it's not like she's doing it one day and going, yeah, that worked. And then not uh, seeing how it looks a year from now. And I didn't know clay would do that. But it does do that. Like um, when I was first learning. I was watching someone make charms. Like little goofy looking little characters. And not goofy but like little kid character type things. And she was applying nail polish. So when I research nail polish. Nail polish will actually change your clay. It will get sticky after like a year. It's not a good sealer. Which is why the other thing that makes me nervous, people using the pledge to seal things. One of the pledges, I'm not quite sure which one, but I've seen, be, heard people use that. I don't know long term how that will stand up. because when, that, Which is why I kind of like resin. When I make a piece, I, I'm hoping these pieces will last me. 10, 20 years, 30 years. I don't want them to start getting weird in a year. So, anyways, I just wanted to talk to you guys about that and my opinion on that. People may have varied opinions, but that's my personal opinion. So, these are all soft. This is not soft. I'm going to keep shaving this. You've watched me do enough, and I will be back. And then this is still good. Good, uh, white pearl primo clay. So, I'll be back. Okay, so they're all sliced. Everything is flat right now. And the next thing I'm going to do is just um, burnish it out. So I just put them on a piece of wax paper. I have another piece here. And I'm just going to burnish them by hand. You could roll it through your machine, but if you do, it's going to stretch out your pattern some. So it really just depends on what you want to achieve. It's, it's really flat right now. I'm just trying to make sure it's nice and flat. And you could roll it through on the same setting you rolled it through before, you know, just to flatten it out. Maybe I'll try that on one of them. Just to make sure they're, that they're level. So um, on these ones, oh, I think I had them on a zero, setting zero. And then we trimmed it and stamped it and trimmed it. So I'm going to put it back through on a setting zero. Let's see what happens. So this is what it looks like. So I put it back through on a zero. I still have a little gouge right there. So I'm going to put it on a one, maybe just the hair. There we go. That didn't actually do too, too much. Because I can still see some ripples. But I don't want to, I don't want to stretch the pattern too much. So I'm going to do it by hand, I think. I'm going to roll it just a little bit by hand. Careful I don't hit my other one. Huh? I'm getting ready for Halloween this week. And I made that spider necklace. And I'm going to be making some things to go in my hair. I got some spider web to put in my hair. 
because a couple of us dress up at work. Not everybody. It's not required. I have worked at places where it was required to dress up, and I hated that. Because I'm so little, I can't find costumes. I'm too big for the kids, and I'm too small for the adults, and it sucks. And a little bit more down here. It's hard to tell if anything's raised because it all looks raised even though it's not. Okay, that one's good. Let me get this one done. And then these will be done. And I'm going to take pause for a second. Not that you will know, but I am going to pause for a second. Not that because anything went wrong. Mainly because my hot glue gun is was heating up and is ready to go for my little hair pieces I plan on making. I'll show you them in a sec for Halloween. And I don't want to just leave my hot glue gun running. Machine because I want it to be all level, and there's still some spots that are not okay. So, if a one won't do anything, we try two. So, that was a setting two, and I put it in that way. I'm going to do a three, and I'm going to put it ugh, three's going to actually do something. I'm trying to decide which way do I want to stretch it do I want to elongate it, or do I want to widen? And I think I'm going to widen, so I'm going to put it on a three this way. You don't have to. I mean, you could be totally fine with this. This is actually really smooth. There's just a few areas right here where I have a little rippling. Okay, so I put it through on the three, and now that's fully level. Ooh, ooh, hot heat gun, or glue gun, just fell. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on this one, and this one I am going to widen as well. And that one's now done as well. Okay, so we have these two, and they're good to go. And I'll be back once I get done with my glue gun, because it's on and I just dropped it on the concrete floor. So I'll be back. Okay, so th that's the necklace I made the other day that I showed you on Facebook and I just put it on a black um, piece of leather that I just made because I wanted it quite short more like a choker on me it's kind of like that okay and then this is what I'm gonna wear in my hair part of it I have long hair so I'm gonna do a, um, a tight well either a tight bun or a messy bun and then I made some clips and some bobby pins and then I got some tattoos for my face and stuff which will probably have to go more on my forehead because I wear a mask and glasses all day or loops so you can't really see but yeah that's what I'm going to do <laughs> simple easy it's hard at work because you wear a lab coat all day, so you can't really... It's hard to wear an actual costume. I was a witch last year, and you couldn't wear the hat all day because you couldn't get your loops on, and you can't wear your mask, and you can't have a lot of face makeup because your mask wipes it off, so... These are my little spacer friends. Wanted to show you those. Okay, inspiration hit. I didn't know what I was going to do with these. I knew I wanted to do this... Um, these texture stamps on the pearl but I didn't know what I was going to do with it after I do now so I have a girlfriend who's been making these texture stamp or um, silk screens Ojoy Creations is the company um, and her name is Mary Joy Coleman she's on our Facebook page 
she makes um, silk screens at home she just started doing it and she also has been making some really cool ones she can make the pattern smaller or bigger um, these were some of the first ones she made so I talked to her about making smaller patterns for pendants and things um, and she could totally send me more with a smaller snowflake pattern but I think this will work we'll try to make it work um, and if you have an idea she can you know just contact her and she'll uh, create whatever really you want to create so it's www.ojoycreations.com um, and again she's on my Facebook page Katie's Polymer Clay Friends so she sends you instructions and everything how to use these and so I'm going to use this one that she sent me this snowflake one and hers come with a coating on them which is kind of nice it helps protect them okay and you peel this off this mylar strip and that will help keep it you can store it like that okay so if I take that off you want her name to be correct so you don't want it this way because that's incorrect so you want her name to be correct now, I'm going to do this one first, or this one with this. I don't know. We might do something else with the other one. Let me lay it down flat. Let me lay... this on here. Oop. This way. My clay's a little long for this, which is fine, because I'm not going to use it all. It's kind of sticky, which is handy. Will I get more if I do that? Yeah, but I want to go this way. Uh, which part of it is better? Up here? Yeah, up here. I'm just looking where I have a better mica shift, so you just lay it on and kind of burnish it down lightly and you can use to apply your paint or you can use like really fine glitter or mica powders would also work through her screen she said um, but I'm gonna use a paintbrush you could use a credit card to put this on with or a squeegee anything you want to but I'm just gonna use a paintbrush and I'm I'm gonna at least do two so this is deco art metallics paint and this is the peacock pearl and then I have this um, deco art interference paints Oops, sorry um, interference paints and this is the blue which you can see more when you tilt it I need something to put these on <laughs> piece of cardboard right here I usually keep my some recycling down here so I can use that for paints so I'm gonna apply one color and then I'm gonna go upstairs wash this real fast so after I apply this I'm gonna boogie on up and then we'll let it dry and then we'll apply another color and maybe even another color so I've shaken this really well because I want a lot of the pearls in it I might need more than that and I haven't used a lot of silk screens I think I've used one honestly so hey might as well yeah my paintbrush is a little loose I'm just gonna crimp that down a little bit there we go and I like I said I'm just gonna apply it with a brush nice even layer And you do want to clean these quite quick after you're done with them. You do not want to let your paint dry in the silk screen itself because you'll ruin your silk screen. And she's awesome. So she, we, you know, we were talking because she just started doing this. And I was like, so some of the patterns, you know, work great for like bowls and bigger things. But some of the pattern, I like this pattern, but say I want this pattern smaller so I don't just get two snowflakes on a pendant or if I use it for half a pendant. So we talked about her doing the same patterns just to, to scale it down smaller. Not actually that you're getting a smaller size, which you totally could, 
but like the actual size of the snowflake is shrunk. So we talked about that. And I think she's doing that now. And like she said, she, like if you make your own drawing, just do it in dark, like a Sharpie would be great, or a really dark black pen. Um, and she can create that too. Um, if you have a drawing in mind or a design or something you're looking for and can't find, she could probably come up with something pretty cool for you. Okay, so I'm going to go take, well, let me take this off first. Beautiful. And I'm going to go put this in some soap and water and clean this off. And she has all the instructions on a piece of paper she sends you. So I will be back. I just wanted to show it to you up close. Okay. So now it should be dry and my silk screen dried really quick as well. So the next thing I'm going to do the same thing. And hers are like I said, kind of sticky, which is handy. And now I'm going to kind of apply it in a different direction. Something like this maybe, but I'm using the top more. Burnish it down, and this time I'm going to use this interference paint. And then after I go wash this, I'm going to get started on the other half of the appendix. I may make a whole one, but I also might make a half and half. We'll see which I'm going to start on. Or I might use the other one. So this is the interference. Make sure it's my brush. No, it's dry enough. Which I really won't see much because it's more of a, like a, your um, interference mica powders. Just more in the light shimmery like and on black it's really iridescent but it looks white on I'll have to move it and show it around move it around later because this one is the blue so you'll have this blue kind of shimmery which I thought would be kind of cool it's just hard to tell where you've already gotten it on there. A little bit more just in case. Again, you can use a credit card, an old credit card, an old ID, whatever you want to apply this with. I'm just rinsing off my brush real quick. Oh, a piece of the uh, glue. And I'm going to let that dry. You won't see it right now because I haven't moved it, but I can see it. Okay, I will be back in a sec. Let me go rinse this. You know, and they wash really nice. They dry really quick. Um, you can apply the backing because this side does stay a little tacky, which is great. So you can protect it with your um, little cellophane sheet here once it's dry. Um, just clean it with soap and water and lay flat to dry. But again, she sends instructions. Um, and I do believe... And I will let her know, but I do believe she's going to give a discount, like a 10% on those silk screens. So not in my notes below this video, not in my stuff, not in the description, but in the comments, I'll have her post the discount code there. Um, okay, so let me move this and I'll get my other stuff out for the next part. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is take some translucent. And I've made a pendant with this half before. But I really love it, and I've never done this color, so I wanted to do it again. And this, this silk screen uh, clay is still drying, and when it's dry, I'll show it to you guys. Now, this is Primo Translucent, and I had it in one of my chopped up bags. It's either white translucent or regular translucent, not that it will really matter much. The next thing I have is some alcohol inks. Um, I have three different colors because I'm not quite sure, but I want some blueies. 
So I have the Aqua Pool, and um, this is the Pinata Baja. These both are the um, Ranger. So if these are too light, then I might do the Baja, but I don't want anything too dark at all. So I got this split up into two. I'm going to apply. This is going to need a decent amount of this color. But I don't want these to be opaque at all. I still want these. I just wanted to tint it a little bit. Okay, so I'm just applying some on there. Let's try this pool. This might be a little too greeny. Let's see. Oh, actually, that's not bad. You know what? Let's do the pool and the aqua on one. And then I'm going to put a little Baja in that one. Just a little bit of Baja because this is an intense color. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry for a minute, and then when they're dry, we're going to mix them up by hand, because you'll get a mess in your pasta machine. Once it's mixed in, then you can put it through the pasta machine, but until you get it pretty much incorporated where nothing's coming off on your gloves, um, you definitely want to do it by hand. The net other thing is, while you're waiting for that to dry, get out some metal leaf. Um, I have silver here. I don't want to open it because it's messy. And then I also have some blue. And I'm not sure if I put that on my Amazon Ambassador page yet, but I'll make sure to put it on my Amazon page, the um, set I got. It comes with a whole bunch of different greens, pinks, purples, blues, gold, silver. So it has tons of colors in these little packets here um, of the metal leaf. So I have blue and silver, and we're going to use a little bit of both of that to get some glimmer down in here. pretty much dry. So this is a pretty dry clay to begin with. I had to soften it up with some clay softener and I actually should add some more because I haven't used translucent in a while so I haven't really checked it. But this was a batch that I honestly couldn't even get to come together. And what's nice is the alcohol inks actually make it a little bit softer. So I'm going to mix it up by hand. And, you know, whatever you use for coloring, this is a great, I made an orange one like this. The other side's different because we're going to do a half of this, half of the silk screen. The other sides, I didn't do snowflakes. I made an orange tone one and I made a green tone one that I'm actually going to wear tomorrow. Um, and I love them and I get so many compliments on them because I didn't back them. So they have a nice translucency to them, this half, which I love. They're super pretty. Okay, so I'm just going to mix them up by hand, both of them. So right now I'm mixing the Baja. So really, honestly, whatever blue colors you got, or teal, tealish blue, whatever, And I hadn't conditioned these clays at all because I didn't want to make them too soft either. So I just kind of pulled some out because now I'll be conditioning it. So once it gets fairly mixed in, then you can put it in your pasta machine. But don't do it until you're fairly, fairly mixed because that will rub off on your pasta machine and probably be a mess to get out from in there. You definitely probably have to take it apart to clean everything out. Okay. So you don't want it super, I mean, you can have it super dark, but I don't want it super dark. Okay, so I will finish mixing this in the pasta machine. And then this one looks dry enough. So I'll start conditioning this one. And this was that crumbly batch of translucent I got, which is now coming together. I got my, hang on, let my sleeve up with just a little bit of working. 
I mean, before I tried conditioning this for hours, like, like literally I pounded it with a mallet. I, uh, warmed it up in my armpit because I don't have big boobs, so I can't put it under my boobs, but I warmed it up with my body heat. I rolled it through my pasta machine a million times and it still crumpled all over the place. And I was like, okay, this is ridiculous. So I, um, chopped it all up into really skinny little pieces. Added some clay conditioner in a bag, let it sit for a couple days. Um, I chopped it up again. I added some more if it needed it. And I probably could do it one more time to make it a little softer, but it is coming together fine. So one's definitely deeper than the other, and that's totally fine. And this one is a little more greeny, but again, that's okay too. I want to make one a little more blue. I think I'll darken this one. So maybe I'll add some more. I think I have a different blue too. Um, I think I have a new Jack uh, Pinata one, and I think it's called Sapphire Blue. If I can find it in my little. Oh, is that it? That's Baja Teal. Where is it? Sapphire, yep. I need to get a bigger box. And I have the pearl ones, and they're in a separate little... Yeah, that's kind of blue I'm talking about. Cool. That's the sapphire, the pinata sapphire blue. Okay, so you don't need to watch me mix these by hand. Once they're dry, I'll, I'll put this in the pasta machine now. And then um, I'll mix, finish mixing that one up, and then I will be back when these are done, okay? So I do want to say while I'm mixing this, I just thought of something. So I did not want to do this whole, I got excited, and I thought of the silk screen, so I decided to use it. <laughs> now, I didn't want to make the whole pendant tonight, but I did the silk screen, and when I was upstairs washing it, it's 11, 12 p.m. on Tuesday night. I was like, oh, man. So remember a while back I did that faux wood where we used the acrylic paint? Well, I did a second batch off camera of that, and I used a really cheap paint, acrylic paint. And I don't know if Deco or... I don't think Deco or Rom's really fancy. I know it's not really fancy acrylic paint. Um, but I even used a cheaper one than the Deco Art. Deco Art, sorry. My resin's Deco or Rom. Um, but the, I even used a cheaper one than the Deco Art paint. And I did that full wood technique, and then I didn't bake it. I wasn't ready to bake that night, so I let it sit. I went to work. The next day, so that night, when I first did it and did that full wood technique, it dried, right, like normal. The acrylic paint dried on the clay. Well, I left it there with the clay raw, the dry paint on top. I went to work. The next day, I came back, and the paint was then tacky. The paint changed. Okay, from the raw clay, sitting on the raw clay for so long. So then I, um, those are almost the same color. Then I um, baked it, and I was like, okay, well, what if I bake it? What's going to happen? I baked it, and it still was tacky. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So if you're going to put, and that was just a personal thing. I don't know this for sure. I'm just throwing it out there. If you're going to put acrylic paint on raw clay, and you do not plan on finishing your, piece then wait to apply it because you don't want to have it do something weird to your clay maybe I'll put a little denim in this so I have to finish this pendant tonight otherwise I'm afraid that it's going to get a little weird that silk screened clay if I leave it till tomorrow I'm afraid it's going to something weird's going to happen to it and then I have to redo it which I don't want to do I want to use that so we're going to finish this pendant tonight or get it baked tonight. I just added a little of the Ranger denim just because they were almost the same color and I don't want them to be. So I, I just thought of that so I figured I'd tell you. And yes I should have just waited for that alcohol ink to dry but I didn't. Oh. Wow. And I've done this before, not waited for it to dry, and everything was fine. 
but ideally you should wait for any moisture to dry on your clay before you mix it in. Okay, those are two different enough of the tones. And my silk screen's dry, so I'm gonna apply it back to my mylar thing here. Let's see. This is the side that needs to go on. So and that also helps sturdy them up so they're kind of not just a bent up silk screen. You can it helps to keep them and keep their shape. Though I didn't do that perfectly, but oh well. It's on there. Okay, so we got these two colors now. And now I'm going to take some of my... I really should do this on something because this silver leaf gets freaking everywhere. I have an old paper towel here. I'm just going to lay these on for a second. Just a second. So this is the blue. And I'm not going to apply full sheets to this, I don't believe. I'm going to take some of this blue. Just pieces of it. I don't need a full sheet because I don't want to have too, too much of this dark blue. It's pretty blue. I'm just going to apply a little of that, and I'm going to do the same thing with the silver on the other one. It doesn't really matter. You could put it all on one. I don't think it'll really, really matter that much. But I'm not coating the whole thing, and that will also help them stick together, because the silver leaf, to, the metal leaves don't like to stick to each other. So definitely keep your little scraps, because they work well for this type of stuff. can tell I reuse my paper towels many many times. <laughs> That's the one I leave near my pasta machine to clean out the rollers underneath. I just take the paper towel in between the two rollers and just to get the excess clay off the bottom of the blades. But I reuse it until it's too nasty and then I just wipe my paintbrush on it and my fingers. more silver than the blue. But I did apply a good amount of blue, but I don't want to coat these whole things. Oops. And it won't stick to itself, so just slide your finger around and you should be able to slide it to a different area. Okay, done. So they come in these little sheets, and you get a whole bunch of them. This is the silver. I mean, you get tons of them. I've had these sheets for like a year, and I probably only use like five. I've done quite a few. I mean, they're probably like four by four, or three by three. I'd say probably four by four size wise little piece that doesn't want to go back in the packet. Okay, let me wrap this back up before I end up with it blown all over. Let me show you the thing it comes in. And it wasn't that expensive either. So it comes in this here, and you can kind of see the colors. There's a purple, like a rose um, gold color or coppery color. There's a bright pink. There's another pink gold green, dark purple, red, so there's the silver, the blue, so there's a lot of colors in this. It's uh, 500 pieces total, and I think 10 different colors, so it was actually a good deal, and it'll last you a lifetime pretty much. Okay. 
take my gloves off now. Actually, let me leave one glove on. Because this stuff gets all over you and you can't get it off. And then we're going to stack these. Okay? Almost exactly like we're doing a Makume Gane, which is exactly what we're going to be doing. Okay? I know they're not perfect. I know they're not the same length, but I'm going to use all of this clay. Why? Why waste it? Because this isn't going to be an exact thing. It's going to just be layering the metal in between. Um, and then let me take... This was from my uh, silver leaf that I just used up. Let me just roll this out a little bit because I want to get it through my machine. But I also don't want to get this stuff all over my roller. But it's too thick. Okay. So I think I'm going to put it on this through my pasta machine so I don't get silver leaf all over everything. So I'm going to open this up, I think, and I'll put it through my pasta machine like this. I don't mind if I have a crinkle in it, okay? Again, on my thickest setting. So far, everything's been on my thickest setting. I'm just going to stretch it out, and then we're going to cut it in half, exactly like you would do Makume Gane, except for you, we're using translucent. Okay, tinted translucent and um, leaves in this. I got a little piece of red right there. So I'm going to run it back through again, but again, I don't want to get that stuff on my uh, pasta machine, so I'm going to put a piece of paper on it. Okay, cut it in half again. Doesn't really matter what way you cut it in half. Oop and stack it again. And we'll do this a few times so that way it's it's a layered effect. So there's blue and, and silver on top of each other. So we're getting many, many layers now. And we're because we didn't lay a full sheet on, we are also going to be able to see some translucent through it. Okay, so I don't think in, on camera you'll be able to pick up all the layers, but you can kind of see that there's layers. You can see the um, silver or the metal leaf is kind of distributed in layers. And maybe we'll do it, one, we'll roll it out one more time. Let me crunch that side up a little bit so there's an even sheet. Put it in a little crooked, but that's okay. That'll be fine. We'll make it work. See? Clay, you can force to do whatever you want. And this is not a perfect pattern. Okay? I'm just trying to get it back into like a square or rectangle. And now, you can just see from the top, we have some areas with Morse, and then you can see the other metal leaves way down in there. And when we bake this and the translucent goes translucent, you'll actually see that. Okay, so I want to stack this a couple more times just to get a smaller little block. Pushing out the air. I want it to be thicker than my thickest setting because it's going to be hard to cut strips out of right now. And we're doing Makume Gane without, we're doing the layering like Makume Gane, but we're not going to be putting impressions in this because, I mean, you probably could, but I'm not going to. Mm -hmm. Just want to get it into a little square. And then I'll cut pieces from it and we'll make a veneer. Get that 
air pushed out of there. Now this is a great time for an acrylic block, if you have one handy, to kind of just make sure it's all mashed together well. So we have all those little layers, but then we have the layers I just created too. sure it's stuck really well together and then we'll begin cutting slices from it oh, I gotta get off my legs I'm sitting on my knees so I can see the camera but it makes my legs ache okay so now let me get my really sharp blade and I'll be right back okay I also want to show you this silk screen now that it's dry. Oh no, I got a piece of silver leaf on it. Hang on. That's what happens, it gets freaking everywhere. Okay, so can you see the iridescent blue down in there? I think I can see one up there, see one down here. So those snowflakes with that interference paint, that's giving it that iridescent as well. So like I can see a snowflake right there next to that teal one. And one right there too. There's one there. So I thought that would just be cool because it's not that obvious, but it's definitely in there. You see them? There's one big one there and there's a couple. So, uh, interference on black looks great. On white, it's cool too. I thought it would look nice. It gives it more of a shimmery. It's kind of like something that no one's really going to notice, but they'll notice that there's like a shimmery effect to it. Okay, so now we need to cut this. I'm going to stand it up, or you could lay it down and gouge. Um, let me get a layer off, and then I may gouge into it so we get different depths of the, um, I keep saying silver leaf, but metal leaf. And it is a little sticky, you should let it rest, but can you see that there's different depths in there? And obviously that's just the first slice. Let me do another one too. If you pull on your blade a little bit outwards, it puts a little tension on your blade and it helps to slice through. I'm not going to use my Lucy Clay Slicer because one, I don't care that they're all the same thickness in this kind of project, but two, I don't know if the metal leaf will dull it at all. So. And those blades are like really, really, really expensive. Okay, I'm going to stick it down. And now I might gouge a little bit so I get different depths in it. See, you can even see there. Some of the blue is right up at the top. And some of the blue is way down in. Okay, and I'm not going to put this on clay. Like usually you would take Makume Gane slices and you usually would put it on like scrap clay or something. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just put them together to make a sheet. Now, people have told me my thing slides around. Yes, I have a silicone mat here, but it still slides. So it, it does, and I'm only using this matte tile because I get reflections. If I was working on my glass one underneath, I wouldn't have this problem, but I do have this problem, okay? I've tried different things anti-slip mats and none of them work on this little tile so it kind of is what it is plus this clay I just got done working it so it is soft and it's totally fine that I don't have even sheets that's kind of what I'm going for here just a natural uneven effect because after we're going to roll this out and it's going to be totally 
different looking and we're going to run it through the pasta machine again. So I'm taking different depths so I get different looks here. But you could just cut sheets out of it. You don't need to do the different depth thing. That's just what I've done every time I've done this. And I like the way it, they've come out, so I'm going to do the same thing, even though I don't know if that really matters that much. even here that looks really cool right there. Some of it's up closer. Oh, I have a cut for my dog, so I was just trying to block out the background so it would focus. Let me make sure it's on. Isn't that cool? And when you sand and buff this, this looks really awesome. So then all we're going to be doing is laying it down. And if you have thin ones, that's fine. We'll patch it up with other ones. So put your thicker ones together first. This is not one of those veneers that needs to be perfect. And I tend to go towards, gravitate towards those. You guys know that, that I like the ones that I don't have to make perfect because I just, you know, it's 1133 PM on Tuesday night and I just don't want to deal with that. I don't need a huge sheet of this because no matter what I'm going to get two pendants out of this if not more so I'm going to fill in any areas that have like depressions like they were thinner there so I'll fill in those areas next before I go wider that one there there and that will also make it all uneven which is great kind of what I'm looking for hide the seams a little bit then right there Oop, I gotta plug in my phone Okay, let me roll this out by hand quickly before I use up my last two pieces. Just to see where I'm at. Dip it right there. Okay, I gotta plug in my phone. I'll be hang on one sec. Okay, so now we're gonna pick this up and I'm gonna run it through my machine. Okay, so I'm gonna run it through on the thickest setting, but I don't even think it's the thickest setting. But because I know my silk screen clay, uh, no, I put it on a three, didn't I? If I watch this back, I put that on a three. So I want this, because I want them to be the same thickness. So when we lay the two veneers next to each other, they want to be the same thickness. So I think I stretched this out, and I think I went to a three. So I'm going to put this on a three. And I want to make sure all my seams are gone. And if they're not, I'll fold it in half, and I'll put it through on a three again. And that's not 
you still got layers in here, so that's not bringing them all up to the same layer. I mean, I wouldn't roll it through your pasta machine a whole bunch, but a couple of times isn't going to kill anything. So now these should be, if I'm correct, yeah, the same thickness. And I can't just rewind right now and, and go back and check it out, you know. You guys might be like, oh yeah, you put that on a three, but it's different when you're actually doing it and talking and trying to remember everything to say to when you're just watching. It is different, trust me. It's like when you watch people on like competition shows like um, um, ch Chopped or something and they're like, oh, when I'm watching this from my couch, it seems so easy, but when you're actually doing it, it's so hard. Just remember, it's not as easy to record as you think. Okay, so now we have our two halves of our pendants here. Oh, bug, a little fruit fly on my thing. Okay, so now I need to get my cutters out and decide what shapes I'm going to go with. And I want to get out my baking tile, so let me grab those things. <laughs> 